Alright, good morning everyone, welcome back to another replay analysis. Today we'll be looking at uh, Necrophos, played by Seb. Because I think uh, Necrophos is currently one of the highest win rate heroes on Dota Pro Tracker. And uh, on Dota Buff, the win rate for this hero is really insane. Even at the uh, very high MMR brackets. So obviously this hero is really overpowered right now and will definitely get nerfed. So better play this hero as uh, much as you can before that happens to gain your sweet MMR. I recently reached Divine 7 with uh, like playing Necrophos, like this uh, game I won right here, and Sand King. But uh, we covered Sand King a couple of times uh, in the past few replay analysis already, so should be pretty familiar with how to play this hero. But uh, I don't think I've done a Necrophos one before. And also I feel that even though I won this game, uh, didn't really feel that I stomped it that hard, so we'll just take a look at how Set plays it <clears throat> and uh, see how we can improve as uh, Necrophos players. Alright, so as usual, I've been doing a little bit of uh, more predictions style kind of analysis. I think that helps a bit better. In addition to all the usual stuff, of course. Okay, so we're in the game. We'll just start off with his starting items. We've got a Tango, we've got Healing Self, we've got Fairy Fires. Two of them, actually. Uh, Circlet and Ironwood Brunch. So what this does is, I think, uh, he wants to maximize his last hitting potential in lane, at least for the first two levels. Necrophos kind of has... Shitty uh, base attack damage, as you can see, is like 49 to 53. So you definitely want to boost it up uh, as far as you can, so that you can at least get some CS in early levels. This hero doesn't last hit that well. Personal experience, I can confirm this. Uh, so yeah, you won't have enough regen, definitely. And two fairy fires gives you four attack damage, which is a lot. And of course, these uh, two items just gives you the stats. So yep, pretty good choice. I think I'll. I think I'll start going these items too. Pretty solid. You also have a very good emergency healing with this and your second skill. So right now we'll just see how he fights for the rune here. Uh, he levels up Death Pulse level 1, which is very good for rune contesting, because it's a burst heal and burst damage in an AoE. Potentially, you can do a lot of damage uh, from this spell alone. Uh, as we see this, Sep's name is actually Space Creator 3000. <laughs> Okay, so they're just gonna wait for the rune to spawn. Uh, okay, so right now I'm just gonna predict that uh, they are just not gonna commit for this rune because Naga and Oracle is a lot of damage. So you see this in a moment. Uh, okay, he takes like almost a hundred damage. Oh shit, that's a lot of damage. Okay, he needs to run right now. Okay, he's running, he's running. Um, gonna go back up to his high ground and take his rune there. Actually, I wouldn't even take the rune at this situation, because uh, Oracle is coming. Yeah, he doesn't even want to take the rune, so he just leaves the rune for the Oracle, and he goes back to lane. So now he's just gonna block off his creeps. Gonna block off and let the range creep go in front. Oshaker blocks it off too. So right now he can just uh, wait for the creep to meet over here. That's right. Okay, and now we see how he plays the lane. Uh, immediately he goes into the tree area over here because uh, he wants to avoid giving the oracle an easy time to right click him. So this is something to keep in mind when you're playing against uh, range supports that like to right click you down, like Shadow Shaman, Lion, Oracle. You just want to play around the tree area here while waiting for a CS opportunity. So that you don't give them unnecessary opportunities to harass you. So his uh, Oshaker is just helping him out with the last hits over there. He couldn't get the range creep, so the Oshaker got it for him. Um, right now he's just trying to manipulate creep aggro. He attacked the Naga there so that this melee creep is going to move closer to him. And right now he's just going to uh, pressure the Naga since they have a big creep wave. Let's see if he does that. Probably want to go manipulate creep aggro again so that you can drag these creeps over here. 
But of course he needs to be careful because the Oracle is uh, constantly setting up behind him. Alright, so we see him do the creep aggro trick. Exactly what I would have done in this lane. Uh, you want to drag the creep over here so they can get easier time to see us. Because this Oracle is being an annoying little douchebag. So they just stun him up and then they just right click him a little bit. He picks up a stick because Oracle loves to spam out those uh, purifying flames at level 2. And of course Naga has uh, the illusion spam. Tries to get a CS there but it's a bit difficult. So right now the lane is just uh, pushing into the enemy so you definitely want to be uh, you know, punishing the enemy carry. If you have a crit wave advantage it's a good time to be aggressive so he gets a nice range creep there can we get this nope oh he's in trouble he better needs he needs to back off right now because the naga's just uh, attacking into him uh, i think he might be dead he pops a fairy fire to just escape and then he solves up in the trees so that was very close you can see that it's a lot of damage from oracle and naga so right now he has two range creeps here that means he's uh, still has a creep wave advantage Oracle cast the fortune sand on him again, and then he needs to get the hell out. But he's probably gonna get nuked down here unless he tries to turn with the fairy fire. More and more purifying flames will kill him off. No. Uh, yeah. So that was pretty rough. A bit too much harass for him to handle. Uh, in the early levels, Necrophos isn't that tanky, so uh, definitely should be more careful. But of course, if the enemy goes on you like that, Necrophos doesn't have any disengaging spells, so that's why he uh, pretty much died there. In my own games, uh, I think previously I was laning against a Luna and a Abaddon and they just nuked me down as well, constantly. So yeah, I, I know how Sep feels. <laughs> it's very difficult. So right now, he's just going to uh, lane normally. He's got two points in the Heartstopper Aura. You don't necessarily want the, the two points in a death pulse at level 3. I've seen a lot of pros playing Necrophos and they, they went for the two points in Heartstopper at level 3. So probably they prioritize this uh, percentage based health decay and regen even more than the damage from a death pulse. Because death pulse at level 1 does 100 damage anyway, it's enough to get most creep CS under the tower or in the middle of some creep wave. So since the crit wave is right now under the enemy tower, they were very aggressive in pressuring the Naga. So that's the right play. You don't want to be giving the enemy an easy time to see us under the tower. I've seen this happen many many times. So right now, he's just trying to get some CS over here while pressuring a Naga at the same time. Okay. So now that the tower has killed off his crit wave, he's just gonna wait for the crit wave to meet over here and then he's just gonna CS normally. Of course while still drawing the aggro of the creeps to give himself easier time if he needs to. Uh, right now he doesn't feel the need to do that because uh, he wants to make Naga walk into the crit wave and then he's gonna AOE him down with the death house. Unfortunately that was a bad move because it that exposed him to a very bad position and the oracle just jumped on him with the naga and they just busted him down. So definitely want to keep this in mind when playing Necrophos to never ever uh, put yourself in a situation like that because that's gonna make you a very easy target to, to kill. Maybe he should just sit back and uh, right click the naga to draw the creep aggro down. But I'm um, assuming he was uh, thinking of the earthshaker to be in position. He assumed the earthshaker would be in position to help him out and they wanted to uh, turn on the Naga with the Death Pulse. Unfortunately, Earthshaker was off doing something else, and so Sep miscalculated. Uh, that was my reasoning for his play there. Or it could just be a, a bad play. Uh, everyone makes mistakes. So the rune spawn, uh, Nature's Prophet and Earthshaker off to get the runes, so he's just going to CS in his lane. Picks up a crown, which is very good for Necrophos. It gives you a lot of stats, makes you a bit tankier, uh, gives you attack damage for your... Uh, right clicks and also increases the mana pool as well all around very good item can be bought from the side shop i like crowns actually because uh, it builds into a lot of useful items like roll of ethos veil of discord this game he went for veil and radiance so it was like a full-on 
uh, AOE machine build. Maximize the spell damage. So we'll just see how he goes from here. Uh, Naga isn't showing in lane, maybe he's just uh, using the shrine of jungling already. So he has a free lane right now to pressure the tower. So since the catapult wave is uh, incoming, uh, he wants to use this to get as much damage on the tier 1 as possible. I will even like fought this and heal the wave aggressively just to keep this catapult alive. So let's see if he does that. So he preps the creeps before hitting the death pulse so he can make it push faster. And right now we can see him uh, pressuring the tower here. Top tower is under attack. So they see Oracle trying to defend the tower so they just make an aggressive move for him and then they manage to kill him off. It's a very easy kill. Good job. Good job on the rotations. So definitely if you're pressuring a tower and there's a support hanging around trying to soak EXP, <clears throat> it's a good opportunity to actually dive him. Especially if you know if he's alone. And then the catapult is uh, actually dead already but they're still able to get some damage on this tower they may even actually take it down so good job uh let's see naga sends some illusions here try to delay this a little bit at least until the creeps reach here but i think they have enough firepower with the nature's prophet here to take down this tower there we go okay so right now he's just gonna if it were me i'll be staying in this lane and then uh, keep farming for until i finish my veil Personally, I'm not really a fan of Veil, I would rather go for like Raw Ethos or something because it gives you that much more HP, gives you a Disable, it makes you a little bit more useful for your team. So yeah, Seth has the right idea, he's just gonna stay in the top lane here and pressure it. As an offlaner like Necrophos, you don't really want to be uh, moving around too much because he is not that good at ganking. Uh, you, he's, a, he's a lane bully, you will definitely want to stay and occupy the lane and force the enemy to come to you and you make space that way because you are forcing them to rotate to you at another lane. So yeah, that's the general game plan of Necrophos here. You just want to be so annoying and sit in the lane and be unkillable that they commit two or three heroes for you and then your team can back you up or turn a fight. So right now he's just trading farm with the Naga, he uses the Veil, finishes it, and immediately starts putting it to good use. So we'll just see uh, how he fights with this item. So he's also prioritizing the Denies as well, because with the uh, Heartstopper Aura, you get additional uh, region for your mana from the nice as well. Just gonna deny the range creep here, alright. And then he uses Veil on the creeps so that they die faster from the death pulse. I guess it helps with pushing and uh, general team fighting. Okay, actually looking at the stats, it's not that bad. It's got HP regen, armor, agility, strength, intelligence, and 25% uh, magic resistance reduction. It's pretty good for the ultimate as well. So we see Mars coming in for a snipe on the Earthshaker oh, at the back lines. So he needs to be a bit more careful here. Probably gonna go farm some NCs or something. Uh, large camp maybe. There we go. So he uses the Veil. So after the last game, he's probably gonna go back to lane here. Right now, he can't see the enemy though, so I would be a little bit scared. Oh wait, no, actually no. The the TA is at uh, the jungle area here. Probably gonna pick up a TP. All right, and then yeah, it's a bit dangerous at top right now because the enemy team is all there. So he's just gonna wait for more creeps to show first. Also, it's almost the rune timing, so he's probably gonna make a play for the rune. Scanning. Oh, Cope's a techie's mind to the face, but it's fine. Uh, right now, Oracle is going to go for him here. But I think they will be able to turn the fight with the monkey. So he used this, the uh, Ghost Route and the heal. And uh, Techies, who is AFK, manages to die in the back lines. So that's what uh, he was going for. And then he's just running down the TA right now. Unfortunately, they lost the monkey, so maybe he shouldn't have gone for the techies there. 
Um, I know it was the easier kill, but maybe he should have gone for the other heroes to help out the monkey. Because they traded the techies for a monkey, which is like not worth at all. Uh, right now he kills up the Radiance, so this is going to improve his uh, magic damage and AoE presence immensely. He's just going to farm this wave here. He's just going to uh, finish this wave and then finish the other wave, I assume. And then he's going to go back after this wave, probably. Yeah, he doesn't keep pushing after this because it's a bit too close to the tower. Alright, so after farming this, he's going to wait for the camps to respawn. Oh, actually he goes back to base, okay. Oh, to pick up Boots of Travel, okay, that's cool. So, Boots of Travel gives him a lot of split pushing uh, power. Because you can just TP into a wave and nuke it down, and TP to another wave and nuke it down. Alright, that's an interesting way of playing Necrophos. Usually you'll see Necrophos uh, buying like Greaves, but this game he is uh, committing for the full anti-split push. So that's pretty uh, interesting I guess. I've never tried this build before, maybe it's maybe it's a good build. I'll have to stock uh, Sap's profile on Dota Buff to see if this is his preferred Necrophos build. I'm not really sure why this game might be good. Maybe because of Naga? I don't know. Or maybe because this build is just good for like split pushing and creating space. So we'll see. Necrophos is definitely a very flexible hero. You can build almost any kind of item on him. Uh, right now he's just resuming his uh, split push here. Most of the time the responsibility of uh, split pushing in the dead lane is uh, the Necrophos' job or the off laner's job actually. Cause <clears throat> it's the most dangerous lane, you have law region, you're quite tanky, you got ghost shroud and TP, so yeah, most of the time uh, Necrophos should be the one doing this kind of dangerous split pushing. So now he TPs back to mid to defend, so you can see how mobile he is at deep pushing waves. So previously he was deep pushing top, now he's deep pushing mid. So it's definitely a good place all around here. After this, he's probably going to go pressure the tower some more. Maybe he just want to farm a little bit first. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I guess he can't really see the enemy team, so he might be afraid of uh, hitting the tower. Oh, and Mars is actually coming in, misses the spear. He uses the ghost shot to try to buy some time from the red clicks, and then uh, Techies unfortunately stuns him up with the uh, blast off. But now he manages to get a very nice reaper sight onto the Mars, despite the silence. And now he's just regenerating back to full thanks to his Heartstopper. And thanks to that field gank, uh, they are able to turn the fight and get this tower right here. Orko's forced to use the ultimate on himself, so he's just gonna go in and just right click him down. TA is coming from the side, so he's just gonna go for TA right now. So they're just going to run TA down. Naga uses the ultimate, so he probably will the disengage right now. Probably gonna go throw on a stick. Yep, there we go. And then he's just gonna use the Heartstopper. Gets the kill, actually on the... What, what did he kill? Oh, he killed the techies. Alright, but he still dies to an uh, enormous burst from the TA. So yeah, this is uh, one reason why I don't like this build, because it makes you very, very squishy. You don't have a lot of HP, and then going for Radiance, it doesn't give you HP either, so... Uh, that's why I don't really go for this build. Uh, techies kills the <laughs> Juggernaut, cause, because Techies... Fuck techies. Alright, so he's gonna respawn and he immediately TPs in to help his team here. Uh, Mars is probably gonna die and then Oracle is gonna die as well. So that's very good uh, kill participation there. Recognizes that the shrine area was where the fight was going down. So once he respawned, he just TP there immediately. Right now, he's just gonna farm some NC and then it's gonna de push the mid lane again. After this, I'll just probably push one more lane maybe. But I guess it's a bit too scary because uh, Mars has Blink and yeah, TA might be around. And also there might be Techies Mines, so definitely want to be more careful. 
So instead he goes to the jungle, alright. Uh, looking for a kill opportunity on a Naga maybe, we'll see how this does. Uh, goes out with the Veil, uses the first skill, and then he's just not going to commit the Reaper Sight because of the Oracle, he can potentially save him, so he just uses the Reaper Sight on the Oracle instead, which is fine, takes him out for about a minute. So now that uh, all the enemies are showing at the top, he is free to split push the bottom lane, uses Veil again, and then he just nukes it down with his uh, spells. So with, so with the wave pushing into the tower, he doesn't stick around for it because uh, there's a lot of heroes still left alive and he can't see them right now. His team is pushing the T2 at top, so he just goes back to farm off the NC. Drags the two camps together to maximize the effect of the death pulse. Just to increase your efficiency. And then right now, just Juggernaut going in to slice up the TA so they get a very nice kill there. Once again, he's dragging two creeps together. This is how you maximize efficiency as a Necrophos. Alright, so he's just gonna finish up his uh, Radiance first before he commits for any more fights, I guess. Min is pushing in, so he's just gonna do the deep push there. I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit, just to check out his farming patterns. And then the... NC is respawning, so we're just gonna go NC again. Once again, going for the double camps. Always going for the double camps here. Good habit to have. I don't do this enough. And then TP back to the base, picks up his Radiance recipe, then TPs back to the lane. So you can see how Boots of Trouble is pretty good for this kind of playstyle. But I would imagine that in a more even game or a more difficult game, you will want to go for sustained items for your team, like a Greaves or a Rod of Athos, instead of, uh, you know, this kind of split pushing items. So right now he's just uh, pushing the waves here. He needs to be a little bit careful too, because uh, he doesn't want to get caught up by your techies mines. Gets a nice illusion room which you can use to push the waves with. So top wave pushing in, he's just gonna catch this one. Oh, they actually want to get a kill on the TA over here. Alright, let's see how this happens. Drums his pop, Earth Shaker leads him with the echo, and they just stun him up and we just set him down. So that's uh, 81 seconds on the sidelines for the TA, which is very nice kill. And then he immediately goes back bottom to deal with the Naga's back push. Okay, so now I'm actually positive that he went this skill, uh, this item build because of the Naga pick. Because he wants to be able to clear the illusions and also to de-push the, the wave. So yeah, definitely this build should only be gone if you know that the enemy team's game plan is to split push. Like if they have a Naga or something. Otherwise this build would be pretty bad for a general game where you need like lockdown or sustain. Uh, right now he's going for a heart so that he can just stay on the front lines in the team fight and dish out the radiance and death pulse damage. So I think this build is pretty good for this game. He itemized pretty well against a Naga. So if you're a Necrophos and against a Naga, I would definitely consider going this build. Uh, right now he sees a fight breaking out at the Roach Pit so he just TPs in and then he prepares to join his team. So he's just chasing with his uh, Earthshaker here. But they're not able to catch him out, so that's fine. He just goes in for the uh, push at mid. He does some little scouting on the high ground area here. Just to regen his mana a little bit. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Alright, and now he is TPing back to deal with the bottom lane here. So notice in every single uh, split push downtime, he is hitting creeps while waiting for the enemy creeps to show up. Definitely don't want to be just uh, lingering around and not doing anything while you're split pushing, cause all these neutral camps are there for you to take. <clears throat> it's just free gold and EXP, no reason not to take it. 
Radiance top tower is under attack. Holy shit, he almost dies when I think he's mines there. So that was very close. <laughs> he uses the ghost shot to heal himself up. So that was a very close call. Another danger of split pushing against attackies. You never know when there might Dyer's be mines. Courier has been killed. Oh, and finally he dies. So yeah, the techies was uh, around the jungle area, so they just kill him off. So that was very annoying. We'll wait for him to respawn here. Alright, so he respawns, he goes bottom because that's where the crew wave is. And now they're going to set up for the mass here. He hits them both with a very nice uh, veil into reaper side combo. And then now he's just going to go for the Naga here. Uh, but Naga is the song to disengage. So no other kills. But he did get a very good Reapers on the mask. Actually with uh, Veil the Reaper does quite a lot of damage. So that's pretty good. Just gonna be push top now because that's where he's pushing in. And then now he goes bottom because that's where he is pushing in. So you can see how he just does this split push, uh, counter push relentlessly. And soon he's gonna get his heart, which is gonna make him that much more tanky. When you're going this build, you don't have a lot of HP, so heart definitely makes up for it. Very, very nice. I think this build is pretty good. You get you get like uh, HP eventually, and yeah, the radiance makes you farm very fast. Split push very fast. The boost of travel gives you a lot of lane presence. Uh, sorry, map presence. And now he's just farming out the Ancients over here. He's got his heart completed, and now he's going to be much more confident in joining his teams for fights. Just going to deal with the mid wave a little bit, and now he's just going to go for the top fight here. Okay, so he makes his way to the top lane. Just going to go back up his team right now. Just going to pressure the Oracle back so that he can't save anyone with the False Promise. And then he's just gonna reaper the oracle down. So that it's like uh, one and a half minutes without oracle here. And now he's just gonna stand on the front lines and soak up all this harass for his team. He's got a hut, he's not scared of anything anymore. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh, it's a very nice kill. Double fissure, double sprout, and it's gonna be a double kill probably. Uses ghost shot to slow the Naga and down she goes. So actually for talents, uh, he went for the damage, he went for the ghost shot slow and the attack speed. Very good for this kind of damage dealing necro. So with the top lane uh, acquired, he just goes bottom to just split push a little bit. And he's probably gonna go to travel back to join his team. Yep, there we go. So he's just gonna go to travel back. And then just gonna close out this game right here. Yep, and pretty much the game is over at this point, so it's very well played by Seth. He had a pretty difficult laning phase uh, because of the high harass from Necro and Oracle, but he came back with his uh, itemization and some good team fights. Right now they're just trying to break into the base for the final push, so Naga is a song. Probably gonna turn for the TA over here, Reaper him down maybe? Reaper? Reaper? Uh, he, once again he saves the Reaper for the Oracle, because he knows that if he Reapers too early, Oracle can just save his target. So right now the Frost, Frost Promise was committed, which is why now he uses the Reaper on the mask. So he held on to it for that reason which is very well very well played. I would have just used the Reaper immediately and then gotten uh, cucked by the Oracle. So he was very mindful of the Oracle's positioning at all times in these fights. He didn't commit the Reaper too early. So that's definitely something worth noting here. And then they're just gonna win the game here off of this uh, final fight. And that's about it for this replay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Featuring Seb's Necrophos, and I'll see you guys for the next uh, replay analysis.